Derek Hine got me up probably two weeks ago and I stayed at his joint for a couple of nights. Um, just did a lot of house inspections and tried to find the right joint. Um, now moved into South Yarra, so really ideal location, but just been floating through the club most days, trying to meet as many boys as I can, um, make the transition a lot easier. So it's been good feeling real at home. I think I can bring a bit more of a, a more mature edge to pre-season. It's been my third year, so um, bring that also. Just really excited, I know. The boys are excited to get back into it. It's a, it's a long pre-season, so I'm sure we'll be doing it the right way, but yeah, just looking forward to cracking in. Day one's always a bit nerve-wracking. You never know what you're going to expect. It could be the 2K or the 3K, but I know it just gives an opportunity to, um, to be better, which I'm, which I'm looking forward to. It's a new chapter in my life. It's a new chapter in my football, so I'm just going to get there and learn as quick as I can. Yeah, it's a lot different. You can um, fly under the radar at Sydney, which is which is good at times. But I don't know. I like Melbourne. I like all the all the hype about it. You um you never feel like you're not a part of it, which is good. <laughs> Everyone's early. This is what today looks like. So out of here, you'll jump into your prep, but also spend a bit of time getting all your gear collected from Disco, getting around and introducing yourselves to the new staff members as well. We'll be out on the track at 10, into lunch at 12, and then into your divisional rotations in the afternoon. Alright boys, as a group, Curves, get your runners on, as a group. Alright, so today was boys' first day back at the club. Uh, main emphasis today was for the boys just to get an uh, introduction into what the pre-season looks like. Nervous for the, the first warm-up. Uh, probably more nervous about the new coaches understanding what I was saying. Yeah. Um, everything went to plan uh, in terms of uh, hitting the load that we wanted to hit with the footy. Uh, I think the drill design was, was pretty much spot on for first day back, so it was a credit to the coaches and, and to Jamie who, who uh, designed that. Uh, and then we just topped up obviously on, on Anderson Street with a few reps of, uh, of 400s, and just seeing as it was day one, they couldn't have it too easy coming back. So we've got three efforts of 400 metres up the top of the hill. So there's a cone uh, at 200 metres that you run past, and a cone at 400 that Mick Degina will be up at. So, nah, nah, nah. so run the 400 up to Mick Degina. Walk recovery halfway down to the 200 and an easy roll jog back down the other way. So as hard as you can get them done. Yeah. So three, three reps, boys. I think every year the players are prepared for some surprise element to the program, which is footy anyway. So I think they're probably more appreciative that we put them over on the hills on Anderson Street rather than going straight into a 2K time trial straight up. Um, but the boys handled it really well. I'm super happy with, with the condition that the boys come back in. Uh, and obviously uh, Monday's 2K will we'll find out um, more detail what sort of fitness levels the boys actually got to in the off season. Strong boys, look at that. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. That's it. Hey, did he change it? Three. I'm done. Yeah. Come on up, fellas. Yeah, the first couple of days as a development coach at the Pies, is, um, it's been really exciting. It's, it's been great to finally get to meet some of the players and uh, start working with them hands-on and, and uh, get out in the track, which is, uh, I, I suppose, is where I feel more, most comfortable at the moment. But uh, certainly sitting behind a um, computer, I think I'm going to have to get used to that as well. But yeah, the first couple of days have been fantastic just to start building those relationships. When you're coming to the end of your playing career, you, you sort of got to start looking at uh, life outside being a player and I still feel like I, I'm extremely passionate about the, the game and want to help young people or have an impact within the AFL industry so going into coaching was a you know was an easy decision in the end. I had some fantastic coaches as a player and they gave me a, a huge opportunity to be the best I could possibly be and and I hope that I can have the same sort of impact on on this playing group as, as some of the coaches have had on me. Part of my role uh, will be to work really closely and hands-on with the players in terms of what they need from a, a technique perspective, touching the balls as many times as they can and, and becoming 
uh, really clean with their um, with their ball handling skills. So some of the stuff that I was doing with Geordie this morning was was purely around getting the ball in his hands as much as possible and, and being really clean with that one touch. And then we did some kicking after that just to get really sharp on, uh, I guess, the ball drop, uh, getting your footwork in in order and being able to use both sides of his body. So we'll continue to work really hard on, on those things with, with all the players. Take this opportunity and every chance you get to come out of yourself. All right, leadership. Let's go. Ace come, come up with, Ace come up with a good thing. As soon as you do something really hard, finish a 400, finish a big block of drills. Let's get right in nice and tight like we are now. Get right around each other. Yeah, yeah I mean today's session, Friday, was uh, probably the toughest second session I've had to date. Uh, even though we're supposed to be cruising into it, um, we were pretty surprised at how big the session actually was. So previously we had a 2k um, as soon as we got back, which made everyone a lot more nervous, um, especially me because I don't like doing 2Ks and you spend your whole off-season worrying about it. So to get rid of that and do that second, third week in has made, has made the nerves a lot less for the boys. But yeah, now we've got Kevy, uh, who's trying a few more things and tr uh, trying a few new things has uh, been a big difference. It's obviously something I've got to work on my fitness to get into the midfield because uh, we have a very good midfield. But um, yeah, that's my goal for this off season. Obviously you've got to build my tank up, but I'd love to play in the midfield all year. You've got to run with one of the older blokes that has been in midfield for quite a while and just follow them and try to keep up with them. I guess just being able to grind that out and just keep pushing yourself and keep pushing yourself until you actually cannot physically do any more. Come on, don't relax now, don't relax. He's gonna come, you know he's gonna come. He's competitive. Come on. He's coming behind you. Yeah, here we go. Come on, Bert. Come on, Bert. Got him. You're in his head now. Just keep running. Keep running. Keep running. Don't let him catch up to you now. Last 30. Last 30 seconds. Come on. Great work, boys. Fantastic, boys. Well done, boys. Well done. Well done. Love that. That is money. Money in the bank, boys. Don't give in the fatigue. Empty the tank. As we drive this pre-season, plus along with that, being professional, you're on time, you're prepared, we have players that were late, and we have staff that were late today. So as a group, if we're serious, we've got one punishment to do as a group based on the players and staff. The staff have got another punishment as well that were late this morning. One 400, as a group, finish off strong boys, all right? Let's, Let's go. go. All together. All right, boys, one the whistle. Let's do it. Let's go, as a group. So you would have seen uh, on the team app, uh, we we'll run these sessions every single week. So you'll be in a group of three and you can do whatever you want with them. So this is a bit of a warm up for us. I've got a couple who are going to uh, help me out today who have volunteered. And we're going to start with uh, Buddha Gary Hocking. So where is he? Make your way down here, Bud. Make him welcome. I think for us as coaches and staff who work here, our biggest responsibility is to give the players the best opportunity to succeed. Um, and obviously that's physically and coaching and that type of thing, but it's also culturally and off the field. So we've obviously got some people within uh, our own organisation who have got some great experience and um, a lot of life skills. So want to tap into them as well. So not just bringing in special guests all the time. And it was good to hear from, from Buddha um, and J-Lo. I think both those guys obviously They've got um, their own experiences and their own history, both as players and as coaches. So um, I think for a lot of the younger players, it's really good for them to tap into that, understand what they're all about, but all, also for everyone here, all the staff, to get to know them a bit, know a bit about their background, because obviously they're new at the organisation. So I come from a family of uh, four, so two older brothers and uh, an older sister. I'm the ugliest of the, uh, of the four, um, but that's fine. It's all good. <laughs> Play your role. 
I think both those guys knew um, exactly why they were up there and they understood that um, the players would be listening and sort of hanging on every word. So um, I think they were all pretty impressed with, with the two guys and um, just to have them up there even for, we were in here for an hour and it sort of felt like we went for 15 minutes. So um, it was great to, they're so engaging those two guys and you can see why we wanted to bring them into the club because they're going to make such good coaches. And there, was, uh, there was one game in 2005 where uh, took a big pluck on the right there just as the siren was about to go, and went back and tell us, take us through that. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's one of those moments where it's really, it was really clear to me. And when I went, everyone says, oh, did you hear the crowd? Did you see Stephen Milne doing a um, handstand? But it just really, it was clarity in the process that all the work you do with Sando, you know, we're gonna do it, a lot of it in the pre-season, all the work you do um, to go through a routine, to um, you know, try and block out all the all the all the distractions, actually worked in that situation, and that's what you do all the practice for. So when I was in rehab early, I, I just get a bloke to kick it like a thousand times at me on the boundary line because I just knew my I needed that as a midfielder. So I was never talented, but I, I learned to through hard work and learning from different players and playing against great players like Bucks and Bangers and those sort of guys who are, you know, elite mids. Even though you're trying to work at your craft, you can still raise the eyes a little bit and, geez, Dangerfield does that. So I'll see if I can do that. I think that players tap into different things. Um, they're all different. They're all individuals. Um, and we've got to sort of bring them all together and, as I said, give them the best opportunity to succeed. So um, they've also got responsibility. So every player, um, there'll be a player, a coach and a staff member, they've all got a responsibility of a session for the whole year. So the three of them have to, in their own time, get together, discuss what they want to bring to the group, um, whether it might be a, uh, a guest speaker or a documentary or a comedian, it could be anything. So, um, but it has to be something that has a positive influence on the group. So um, obviously them getting together, so the three different individuals um, and having to discuss that is them spending time together, but then also thinking about what the group needs and how, they, how we can benefit from that. And that's what we want to create. We want players who um, have strong relationships and they're not scared to challenge each other and they're not scared to raise standards um, with each other. And, and that's the point of the whole thing in terms of leadership is giving responsibility to those players and making sure that they're setting the right example. And obviously game day, the two hours, um, that's when everyone sees it. But there's obviously a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes. There's a chance to show coaches and show me that you put in work over those you know, eight weeks of the off season empty the tank boys, just give it everything. Yeah, not too, I guess, nervous and that much anymore. It's just another um, fitness thing for me to see, see where I'm at. And yeah, obviously it's, it's a bit of competitive sort of running as well. Um, I used to do a bit, a bit more of that as a young guy, so it was good to get in there and um, have a crack against the first of four years. Right. The start was pretty quick and then me and Smitty were sort of running um, a bit there and. I don't know, I just tried to push push the pace a bit. Coaches love when you're exerting all the energy and you're not sort of holding back, so I think that's something um, I've learnt with that, to just really have a crack and, and not sort of hold anything in the tank. Five minutes, 502, all the way. Yeah, Smithy was holding on and just sort of five, 10 metres away the whole, the whole race, so I sort of um, had to keep surging out a little bit and um, he'd always sort of reel me back in, so. Yeah, Smithy's, you always know he's going to be there right, right at the end. Oh, it has to be different for everyone. That's that's just my my strength and my one wood. Doing doing a big squat or bench press, I'm probably not going to be rated number one in the, you know, or in the top few of the club. So it's, everyone's got that strength about them in, in those tests, so yeah. This is just my strength and just want to make that, that shine when I get that opportunity. Uh, yes, welcome back to episode nine of The Boardroom. Uh, we've got two very special guests here with us in the studio today as well, Jaden. Two mates and I um, started a podcast called The Boardroom about two months ago. So three best mates on three completely different pathways, but all going through it together at the similar age, adolescence, um, you know, going into our first 
sort of jobs and then and then that mixes in with a guest or um, other different people we, we talk to as well. We had Peter Hitchner early on in, in uh, episode two, um, Steph Claire Smith, Instagram model, um, episode five, great to talk to her, uh, Clint Stanaway, Channel 9. Oh, before, we, before we wrap up, there's one question that I have for Tom and I want to put you on the spot here, Tom. As someone who's gone through this whole process that Jack is going through currently, what advice do you have for the young kids? Obviously, you've gone through your process. You've done your two years at Collingwood and then you've extended your contract. So you're doing pretty well. What advice do you have for, for young Jack? Oh, there's not much advice I could probably give a, uh, a, a, a young kid of this calibre. The thing is, a lot of these problems, or not problems, but aspects of the footy world, Jack probably won't have too much of a problem with, I don't think, because he's so enthused in the football stuff that it won't, like, it won't sort of um, derail any of his footy capacity or his, or, his, or his mental sort of state. I think it's a lot of it's mental though. So I think for him, if he can um, have that, that mentally and also refresh and have a bit of a break as well, you know, when he gets home, whether it's PlayStation yeah. or whatever, you know, just chilling out, jumping on Snapchat, right? <laughs> send send one to Big Juicy Phil uh, <laughs> and, and Kel to me. Did you just plug yourself? <laughs> no, he just plugged himself on Snapchat. I just, I just oh, see yeah. too much. Uh, Peter Hitchin did that. Yeah, for me, he's an AFL footballer. Um, it's finite, you know. We, we know that nothing nothing's going to last forever. So what can take you into the next step of your life? Um, I've really enjoyed this stuff. It sort of parallels with my university studies. So doing media and journalism, it's it's a bit of a fast tracker for, I guess, what I like to do. So for me, it's I get I get a, a laugh and you know a bit of a buzz actually doing it. For me personally, it's it's a great sort of. Um, break as well from from the vigorous training during the week and something I can look forward to and definitely builds the skills for media and journalism stuff as well. Good job fellas. Good.